uh, my question is um, going beyond just transactional and financial, the transfer application in for political and social kind of manifestations. So what does it, what do you think it's going to take for us to see um, a, a, a application of transfer beyond just financial, so political and social? That's a good question. What do, what do I expect to see for the application of this technology to the social domain, to governance, to politics, to society beyond the financial? Um, time, lots of time, because this technology has a long way to go to mature. Um, but I also think that before you see it applied in the political sphere, it has to work first in the financial sphere. One of the things that we've seen with Bitcoin, which is really astonishing but really promising, is that people don't care about passwords. People don't care about private keys. People don't care about security until they have Bitcoin on their smartphone, and suddenly, infosec becomes an interest. If you have money on your smartphone, like money, real money, and at first you don't think it's real money. But you hold it for a while, and then maybe it goes up in value, and then one day you look at it and you go, oh, that's real money. That's a lot of money. It wasn't that much last time I looked at it. I was in Prague in a bar, having a conversation with someone. And they asked me what I do, and I said I work in Bitcoin. And they said, oh, I remember that. I mined that back in 2011 on my PC. How's it going? <laughs> so I said, did you keep that PC? I'm not answering the question yet. Did you keep that PC? They said, yeah, I think I have the hard drive somewhere. And do you remember how much you mined? I said, not much, maybe 150, 200 Bitcoin. <laughs> So I said, sit down. <laughs> um, at today's price, your Bitcoin is $700 each. He said, no, it's not. <laughs> so I showed him on my smartphone, and he went white. I mean, he was already white, but he went whiter, <laughs> like a lot whiter. He just started like shaking, and he told his friends, I'm going home right now. <laughs> I can just imagine the scene where he's like digging through hard drives. <laughs> so I advised them to look for the wallet dot that. But anyway, side story. The point is, you never know when suddenly that little hobby you were doing back in 2011 becomes money. But one thing becomes very real. People start caring about security. People who never set passwords. People who set their password to password one two three four. And I'm seeing a few faces in the audience here who are going, hang on, that's my password. How did you know? Uh, <laughs> they start caring about security. <clears throat> Before you go and use this technology to vote, you have to take the security seriously. If someone can steal your vote, and you don't particularly care about your vote, you're going to lose the keys. You're not going to maintain a backup. But if that same device is holding your money, the lease to your car, your house and your vote, primarily because of the first thing, your money. It's well backed up. It's the most secure thing you run. Maybe you're using a hardware wallet instead. You care about the security. So one of the reasons I don't think we're going to see social applications of this is because first you need to care about it. And the only way we found to care about it is to put money on it. 